Hi there. Welcome back. You're listening to The Chapra Show, and I'm Neil, bringing you and sharing my shamanic journeys to the spirit realm and my conversations with the spirits. So for today's journey, the purpose of this journey is to travel to the upper world, to request the spirits for guidance around how do we manage when so much of the news that we read and hear and see is so disturbing. I traveled up from the mountain towards the upper world, going up and up and up, and eventually finding myself at a very familiar flight of pink white steps. I walk up the steps, get to a landing, and for the moment don't see anybody around, so I call in the spirits of the upper world. And I ask them to come be with me and give me guidance around this request of how do we manage when so much of the news that we read and hear is so disturbing. And I go through the names of each one of my spirit teachers of the upper world, calling them in. Then one of them arrives and takes me through the air and I'm carried, transported to the very top of a tower that is part of a castle. So I'm up in the top of this tower looking out onto the landscape below. And I understand that I'm being shown that all the drama and difficulty and upset of the world is being shown to me as if it's far below. I'm up in this tower and the understanding is that one way of managing this very disturbing news is to be as if one was isolated, away from the drama and not being affected by the tumultuous world below. The spirits say that one aspect of this is to ask is it my business? And that a lot of what goes on is really not one's business. I ask, but what about being aware of and really disturbed by things that seem to be causing suffering? The spirits say that that is another issue. On the one hand, it is important to recognize and discriminate between what should concern one and what is just noise. And they give me a powerful analogy, a visual analogy of a ship that's grounded on the shore and there's one person trying to push that ship back into the water. Impossible. They say that in this analogy, what moves the ship back into the water is not pushing the ship, but waiting for the tide to turn. At a certain point, a high tide will come and the boat will be able to float off. So there's, there is a message here of being patient and trusting that things will change over time. And I say, yes, I see the point, but what about when there is suffering and injustice and one really wants to help? They say one does need to make these distinctions of what's not your business and what will change just through the passage of time, but then there is when one can get involved. And one's involvement for most people is going to be what might feel like a very small involvement that doesn't get to the very biggest issues, but one can still help. And they give me an, another analogy of having your own chickens and then, then giving out eggs to people who are hungry. One might say that that doesn't do anything to the fundamental issue of poverty, but on a very practical level, one is helping people in a very direct way. The spirits say that the big issues like poverty are so big and so entrenched in society that mainly those issues can be dealt with by people who are working in those fields in very high up organizational 
and administrative positions where overall policy and implementation can be changed because one is in that very high level position, which very few of us are. They say, of course, that there have been exceptions where individuals have become crusaders for justice or human rights, but in those very rare crusading situations, um, in those rare crusading situations, an individual has been able to make a difference. But most of us have neither the skills, nor the time, nor the freedom, nor the huge, driven, saintly enthusiasm to create social change on a large scale. But we can create social change on a small scale with generosity, with kindness, and even by just being polite, being nicer to other people, being helpful to other people. I ask, what about something like the war in Ukraine? The spirits say that what is one's business is what one can reasonably do something about. So, one could reasonably, for example, donate clothes or food or money to those who are suffering in the war. But the bigger picture of negotiating an end to the war it's just not something that an ordinary, everyday person can do. And there are hundreds, if not thousands, of people employed in positions where they are trained and paid to help change those dreadful situations, like people who work for the United Nations or the State Department. And one just has to leave that level of involvement to the people who work at that level of business. They say, the spirits say, stick to the territory where you can make a difference if you're wanting to help and recognize what's not your business. I say, there is still the issue of reading the news and feeling so depressed and anxious. They say, yes, that's true, but we should be willing to limit our exposure to the news that most of it is not necessary for us to know. It doesn't add anything to our lives and it does in fact take away from our emotional well-being. They say we need to be very discriminating when we listen and read. But unfortunately there is almost an entertainment aspect to reading or listening or watching the news. They say we, they say we should be ruthless. They say a newspaper is a very good way of getting the news because one see, can see a headline and immediately decide not to go further. One can immediately go on to something else and not read that article. They say a big part of what can guide us is the overall notion of what can I expose myself to that is good for me. The spirits say be kind, be helpful, be polite, make a practical difference where you can. And for most people, that's on a relatively small level, but that certainly counts. A few people are in positions where they might be able to make a difference to the big picture. But for most of us, they say, just look after yourself, look after your friends, look after your colleagues, your family. There's plenty of looking after to do. Be kind with what you ingest in the form of news and videos. They say we can view things like we're in the corner of one huge, big, untidy room and all we have to do is just keep our little corner clean and neat. And they say sometimes one gets excited about the feeling of being involved. The spirits say don't do that. The drums change and call me back and I thank the spirits for this flow of very helpful information that they have given me. I walk back down the pink steps and start going back down and down and down and thank the spirits for this wonderful information. So thank you. You've been listening to Neil of the Chapra Show. We have to go on our break now and when we come back Vivian will continue with messages from crystals. 
Welcome back to The Shepherd Show, where Viv and Neil explore this big adventure called life. This is the segment where I, Vivian, convey messages from crystals. And if any of you have been watching our YouTube videos on the Crystal Surgery and Crystal Healing Techniques channel, you will know that Lepidolite in Mica is vying to be my new favorite stone. Lepidolite in Mica. Why is it my new favorite? Because it talks to me. And not only does it talk to me, but it tells me the most interesting and useful information, like what my client needs most. I have these gorgeous Lepidolite in Mica lingams that have become angelic messengers. It, or maybe not it, but this chapter, all began when in an act of desperation I rubbed my sore knees with my Lepidolite in Mica lingam. And six weeks later, my 12 years of chronic knee pain came to a sudden end. The Lepidolite in Mica had set me on a new path, and this new path delivered this extraordinary result in a very short space of time. Inspired by this success, I began to investigate by using the Lepidolite in Mica on many of my clients especially when I wanted next step guidance. Reading about Lepidolite and Mica in Melody's Encyclopedia reveals that both have a long list of excellent healing properties that can yield miracles. Lepidolite and Mica each deserve a whole book of their own. In crystal surgery we use Mica a lot because it moves stagnant energy and moving stagnant energy is always required whether in daily life or in a healing session. Instead of consulting a book to discover what to say about Lepidolite in Mica, I think it is more pertinent to simply ask my Lepidolite in Mica lingam what it wants me to say. So let me go get my lovely stone. As soon as I pick up the stone, it shouts at me, your back is sore, why don't you begin by rubbing your back with me? And that makes me laugh, because there are multiple messages in that one instruction. Let's unpack them. The first message, don't overlook the obvious. So obviously I know if my back is sore or not, why am I just ignoring it? Then, don't neglect what needs attention. Hmm, I don't even want to comment on that part. And then, and this is very useful, because often we get stuck because we don't know where to begin. And Lepidolite in Micah is saying, begin with what you do know about. That's kind of smart. How are you supposed to begin with what you don't know about? And yet we don't, we don't focus there. As soon as I apply the Lepidolite in Micah to my back, I look out the window and notice that it is spring. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, the azaleas and bleeding heart vines are budding, I should plan to get outside as soon as possible. Talk about moving stagnant energy and revealing the next step. It was an instant effect. Additionally, the frown on my forehead turns into a smile on my face. Encouraged by this instant effect, I decide to rub my back a bit more with the stone and notice that my mood changes. I've been feeling a little down in the dumps, I'm going to admit that. Why? Because we just came home from a fabulous trip to Ecuador and the Galapagos Islands. It was a bucket list trip for me. And let me just say re-entry is horrible. And let's leave it at that. Plus, Neil caught COVID. So, hey, there it was. A very hard re-entry, yet a short infusion of Lepidolite in Mica turned my mood 180 degrees and I was feeling cheerful and inspired again. Well, that's appropriate, I thought. Exactly, said Lepidolite in Mica. Now tell everyone what you use for me for in crystal surgery. <laughs> that, that's funny, and I said, because Lepidolite in Mica is used to alleviate depression and to raise vibrational frequency. And that's exactly what it had just done for me. But Lepidolite and Micah wants me to finish with this message. Attitude is everything. 
The human brain has to perceive selectively because there is so much bombardment at all times. A good attitude has you perceive what's good. A bad attitude has you perceive what's bad. When you have a bad attitude, you will get stuck and you will stagnate because you will only see the bad path and you will feel disempowered. When you have a good attitude, you can see the good path ahead of you, make a good choice and feel empowered on your journey. The Pitalite in Micah says, use me to shift your attitude. Wow. Thank you for joining us here on The Shapra Show. Please join us again next month. We begin on the second Friday of the month. And then you can access us on demand. And we can continue this grand exploration of this big adventure called life.